Sterling Blue actually was originally developed as a dye for blue jeans. Um, it's one of those type things, as with many drugs, we start out with one thing and find out it does something else. Um, believe it or not, it was the first synthetic drug that was actually approved um, in the United States back in 1876. A um, couple of tidbits as a pharmacist that I found very interesting was it was used early as a placebo in a lot of drug trials so that when they gave patients the methylene blue, they knew if they were taking it because it would disco the urine to a blue color and they would find out if they weren't taking it because it wouldn't disco their urine. Found that very interesting. Methylene blue, though, actually was first used actually in a lot of our military troops to treat malaria. Methylene blue, if you look at it as a derivative, it ends up uh, being very chemically structured to many of our first malaria drugs, but it itself was actually used to treat malaria back in the early eight and late 1800s. Um, believe it or not, to this day, methylene blue is pretty much um, carried at every hospital. Um, it's used for overdoses and poisonings of cyanide, uh, carbon monoxide, and things like that. So every hospital is actually required to keep methylene blue in stock. Um, also too, kind of as a side effect, when methylene blue is produced, and it actually led into some of our first antipsychotic medications, some of the early antipsychotic medications for like schizophrenia and some of our earlier not nausea medications like chlorpromazine and promethazine were actually early derivatives of methylene blue. The next big thing that I think is important to keep in mind with methylene blue is that it actually led to the development of other drugs. So keep that in mind as even though it was an old drug, it actually led to many other drugs uh, moving forward. I want to talk about some specific conditions with the methylene blue, and then we'll get into some of the basics of dosing in that. But methylene blue, first of all, has been shown to be very unique in COVID. And one of the things it does, like we talked about during COVID, our bodies found, we found out during COVID, the body can be very in, in, and beneficial in terms of protecting itself with, if you have adequate amounts of zinc on board. Well, methylene blue actually allows the zinc to go into the cell, one of the benefits. Methylene blue actually also um, interferes with the ability or helps with the ability of zinc to not allow the virus to replicate itself. Um, and so that's important. Methylene blue also has the ability to lower the pH within the cell and it prevents the virus itself, what's called uncoating or allowing it to kind of start the process to take over our own cells. And methylene blue also has the ability to bind the viral spike protein and prevent it from actually entering the cell itself. So these are just some things in an article I found very interesting how methylene blue can be helpful for people with COVID. One of the really unique things about methylene blue, this was a study done with cancer patients who just happened to be doing methylene blue at the same time the COVID pandemic happened. And what they found was really interesting is when they look back at it, all of the patients that were on methylene blue for cancer, also none of them developed the, the influenza, the flu, or COVID at the same time versus the ones that weren't on methylene blue, which I found that really interesting, which kind of tells methylene blue can potentially have a big benefit in terms of preventing COVID just because it's natural properties. And like you said, it talks really more about this article does about how methylene blue probably prevents actually the COVID actually from binding to the cells and starting the infection process. Found that very interesting. So that's some stuff with COVID and methylene blue. Alzheimer's disease. So keep in mind, Methylene blue is, has been shown to attenuate the formation of the amyloid plaques. There's kind of two big things, and there's kind of two thoughts of, with Alzheimer's disease. We pretty much know on the wellness side, it's really an inflammatory driven process. And these amyloid plaques, which many of the commercially available drugs nowadays go after the target, it's really almost like they're really, we're really kind of trying to put some water on the smoke and we're not going after the fire. The fire. But there's another aspect, which are these what are called tau proteins where basically these proteins get mis misformed and it's thought to be an inflammatory driven process. And the other thing that's thought to do with Alzheimer's disease, there's thought to be some neurotransmitter issues between our serotonin, our choline, and they can also play a part of the cognitive aspects of Alzheimer's disease. And some recent studies have shown that methylene blue may have a benefit in terms of our patients with Alzheimer's in terms of improving the cellular function in the brain and its potential benefits for, metho for methylene blue and Alzheimer's disease. This was a really interesting article here that talked about methylene blue and its cognitive performance in patients. And I'll tell you about a lot of these studies. Many of these studies are, were had humans involved 
And a lot of these were rat studies because some of the things that were done, we really don't want to perform on humans in terms of some of the benefit, but a lot of it has to do with doing some of these effects on rats and then actually looking at their brains afterwards and the benefits that, are, that occurred. But in terms of methylene blue in this study, we talked about that tau protein, which is these proteins that misform in the brain that are thought to drive some of the problems in terms of the brain's misfunction with Alzheimer's disease. And methylene blue actually inhibited this tau phosphorylation, which actually prevented these tau, some of these neuro uh, micro neural tangles, tangles from forming. Um, and with that said, it's really thought if these neural tangles happen, the body actually has the ability to come in with methylene blue. It, the methylene blue can tag these and actually allow the body to come in and clean up and scavenge up these misforming cells and allow the cells that are there to perform better. So once again, with, we don't really have a lot of great drugs on the market with methylene blue, but in terms of the cognitive function and what methylene blue for an Alzheimer's patient, it may show some benefit. This one I found really pretty interesting in terms of uh, terms of that goes. Um, this one had to do, this one was a rat study, but based on this study did, it wanted to look at whether methylene blue, and I find this interesting as a, as a wellness focused pharmacist, and I have a lot of practitioners on the night that are wellness focused. We have something that we talk a lot about, which is called leaky gut. And it's, or what's called, what you might call gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. And it's basically where due to our diets and different things, our food and different things, the gut lining separates. And when that hap happens, are we leak out what's called lipopolysaccharides. These are the cell walls off of the, the negative gram negative bacteria in our gut. And unfortunately, these lipopolysaccharides, or I'm going to say LPSs, actually are great inflammatory triggers for the body. Anybody that does wellness understands this and is like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It drives inflammation and inflammation drives a whole host of other diseases. And I was looking at this article because it was kind of unique. They induced this LPS on these rats. And what they did is they allowed it. And we know what happens is when LPS hits the brain, it causes microglial inflammation. Microglial is our, in, in our basically our immune system of the brain. And when it gets cut on, it's hard to cut it off. And that's why when you think about it, if you eat a bad diet every day, you're cutting this on every day. And it leads to things like cognitive decline, confusion, you can't have good memory, it can cause headaches, it can cause enhanced aches and pains. And so what that said is they induced this in these rats. And then what was really neat is they gave methylene blue to these, to these rats. And they looked at pro-inflammatory factors that are produced in the brain on these rats. And they actually found that methylene blue when given to these rats that had this brain inflammation caused by this LPS, it resolved the neuronal inflammation. And it actually, the other thing about microglial inflammation, it's thought to lead to a whole host of cognitive issues in terms of um, depression, anxiety, could be schizophrenia, and a lot of, and a lot of uh, psychiatric illnesses. And we actually saw in these rats, it reduced the LPS and some of the triggers that we know for these. Um, and basically it's thought, hey, we maybe wanna look at methylene blue in the, in the future to reduce neuroinflammation to brain related disorders that are, that are related, whether it was LPS that drove it or other conditions that drive our brain's immune system to be hypersensitive. This one was really kind of neat. I know probably all of us on this call would like to have better, better memory or better sustained attention or memory retrieval. Um, I have to thank Sarah Hover for this one. She sent me this one the other day. This one was really kind of unique and this was actually done on humans. So what they did is, they took and they looked at the sustained attention and memory enhancing potential within the brain, the parts of the brain where that occurs. And what they did is they administered methylene blue and then they, they, they monitored the brain function before methylene blue and put the brain through some tasks. And then they monitored an hour later. And what was really kind of unique is, is that the methylene blue actually improved scores in terms of our short-term memory task recall and our memory retrieval. How often do you go through the day where you're like, oh, I can't think of that word or it doesn't come out just right. And I've probably done that several times for this talk. So maybe I need methylene blue myself. But what was really kind of unique about it is methylene blue was actually able to increase the functional, the, the magnetic resonance imaging in the brain of the areas that get used during the processes in terms of attention and memory. And so once again, I don't want to oversell it. Once again, I'm not here to make it anything more than what it is. 
but it is something, and I have talked to some people that people are, are patients and actually friends of mine that are using low dose methylene blue. And that's what they're saying. It's like my memory and my recall has gotten a lot better. And these are really low doses. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but we've seen that with a lot of patients. And I've heard that from several that have been on methylene blue. This was an awesome paper on methylene blue and anti-aging. Just want to talk about things we've already talked about, the oxidative metabolism in the brain, how it benefits, helps with mitochondrial dysfunction. It's also thought it may kind of help slow some of the brain aging processes. Um, it actually showed to be beneficial in terms of protecting our skin. We've kind of talked about, can you have the ability to compound some skin products? It actually shows the ability to stimulate fibroblasts. One of the first things happen if you have a wound for the wound to heal Fibroblasts have to go in and start laying this structure to basically allow a wound to heal. Methylene blue has been shown to stimulate fibroblasts to help with, with um, the healing of wounds. That was something in this study. A couple of other studies I just want to bring up, Lyme disease. Um, not so much for the treatment of Lyme disease, but some of the persister, pers the, uh, persister activity. That means the conditions that hang on after Lyme disease, all the conditions, neurocognitive stuff, poor memory, fatigue, aches, pains, all of those type conditions. There are some studies about using methylene blue for that. Depression. This is when we talked about that neuroinflammation aspect in depression, but also keep in mind, methylene blue is actually what's called an MAO inhibitor. That's an enzyme that breaks down a lot of our enzymes that break down serotonin, that break down different enzymes and our neurotransmitters in the brain that affect our mood. So one of the neat things about that is methylene blue can actually been shown to help with depression and it could be because of the neuronal inflammation reduction, but it also could be because of this uh, monoamine oxidase inhibition. We've already talked about COVID. We've already talked about anti-aging. We've already talked about the neuroprotective effects in terms of how it saves the brain. There's actually a really cool study about patients with cancer who have a lot of oral mouth pain and a lot of inflammation that an oral rinse of methylene blue reduces that pain rather dramatically with very minimal side effects. We talked about how it can help with wounds. Keep in mind, it's also an antiviral, antifungal. Um, we, there's a study right here show, showing about using methylene blue to help treat nail fungus. This is the one thing, if I wanna hammer home anything else tonight, this is what is super important and I wanna get out there. Scarily, I went out and Googled methylene blue on Amazon and you can order methylene blue all over Amazon. And I want you to understand there are different grades of methylene blue. Because keep in mind, remember, it can be used as a dye, but it also can be used as a drug. Th throughout the process is you have a chemical grade, an industrial grade, and a pharmaceutical grade. Chemical grades can have anywhere between 20 to 30% impurities. Industrial grade can have up to eight to 11% impurities. And sadly, I think many of the products that are sold online right now are not pharmaceutical grade, they're this industrial grade. And that scares me, and I'll tell you why in a second. We at the pharmacy, one of the reasons we just started using or recommending methylene blue, we have the ability to get a pharmaceutical grade. If you'll look down here on the bottom, it shows its total impurities as less than 5%. That's a requirement of the chemical. The one we currently have actually has a, a less than 0.05%. These impurities are things like arsenic, aluminum, cadmium, and mercury, and lead. Remember how we talked about before your mitochondria can be dysfunctional if you have heavy metal toxicity. So how frightening is it to think you may be thinking something that you want to do to promote mitochondrial benefit and you order a product that's loaded full of these heavy metals, you may be causing more harm than good. I can't stress that enough. Do not order a product offline. You don't know about the quality. You may be causing more harm than good. Keep in mind, lower strengths, less impurities, but we don't want any impurities. So I just want to stress that if you get anything from tonight, knowing where you get your methylene blue from. I don't want to spend a crazy amount of time on this, but I do want to talk about dosing a little bit because I'd like to get to some questions as far as that goes. But we, when we talk about most of the dosing that's in the literature right now talks about doing a milligram per kilogram dosing, 0.5 to 4 milligrams. I will tell you most of the lectures and talks I've heard use 0.5 to 1. We go with really low dosing. The doses we've seen in the pharmacy are starting as low as five milligrams. Believe it or not, you can get enough benefit on some of these conditions at a dose of five milligrams a day up to 50 milligrams a day. It's very patient individualized. One thing I haven't mentioned tonight is, is a drug called low-dose naltrexone, which we do a lot of. And just like low-dose naltrexone, we do, and it is maybe beneficial. We don't got to initially do quite the taper that we do with low-dose naltrexone. 
But we do want to start low and go slow because everybody's kind of got their own unique space where they need to be at. I will tell you also too, low-dose naltrexone and methylene blue can be coupled together. Think about this as methylene blue helps improve mitochondrial function. Low-dose naltrexone reduces inflammation. Bingo. Top two things that drive the majority of disease in our country. The other thing I'll tell you too that's kind of unique is that methylene blue can be kind of that drug to go to when we tried low-dose naltrexone and we didn't move the needle. Methylene blue may be that good choice to try as an add-on or maybe to try it to see if maybe we can help with some of the conditions that we'll talk from fibromyalgia or some of these conditions that are hard to treat. So once again, we're going to start low, work up slowly. The optimum dose, like you said, is very individualized. For the practitioners, methylene blue has about a 12-hour half-life, which means the dose you do today will stay in the system. Say so we, if we go for like five half-lights, that's about 60 hours. So we're talking a couple of days. It is excreted in the urine. And that's one of the unique things that makes methylene blue. It concentrates in the urine before the body excretes it. And that concentration in the urine can actually, that's what helps it available in the commercial available product um, to treat urinary tract infections. So instead of having to give these antibiotics all the time to treat UTIs or as a preventative, methylene blue can be given on a daily basis to keep that urinary tract in a good antiseptic level to prevent chronic urinary tract infections. Also too, it's really important for good absorption. Methylene blue needs stomach acid. Taking it with food is important, but I also think about if you're gonna spend money for methylene blue, that if you're on a bunch of acid blocker drugs, you may not see the full benefit. It may not get absorbed as well because it really needs that to get done. And methylene blue, just like lotus naltrexone, can be cycled. We can take it at times when we need it. Let's say we've had a stroke and we want to try to repair that brain. And the quicker we can get this on board, the faster it works. There's also some thoughts about athletes, athletes who exercise to that oxidative stress part. Methylene blue may help re-energize that mitochondria to do things. So these are just some things to kind of keep in mind as far as that goes. There are also some thoughts about doing an oral solution um, to actually work the dose up slowly. We haven't been doing those. We've been doing mostly capsules, but I just want to show you what's out there so that you know.